so we were discussing about uh, law uh, w w about norms okay subjective and objective nature okay so um, it is normative if it is if it has objective meaning but if it has subjective meaning then it is norm it is not a norm okay so um, so along with the subjective meaning the act should also have an objective meaning only then it is a norm so the difference between the two examples that we were discussing about the gunman's case the robber's case uh, versus the tax collector's case is that the robbers and tax collectors demand both have subjective meaning but it is only the robbers you know sorry only the uh, the tax collectors you know act which also has an objective meaning in kelsen's you know sense and because of that it is a um, it is a norm now why is that the reason is that the tax collectors act is also validated by another norm okay so the norm that i ought to pay tax because it is being demanded by the tax collector okay that will be validated by for example the existence of a particular uh, you know um, particular law okay particular statute now existence of the particular statute is not a norm okay that's a fact isn't it well the uh, statute exists but that's not how he says we, you know um, it works okay so there is a norm though alongside it and what is that what the statute says ought to be followed so that's the higher norm that exists okay that higher norm validates the action of the tax collector whereas there is no such norm okay um, a higher norm in the case of the demand which is made by the uh, um, gunman or the robber so did i make sense now i mean uh, you know how kelson is trying to uh, define norm okay so the rest did i make sense yes sir okay so yes uh, so the idea is that that ultimately you can trace it all the way okay to one you know uh, meta norm you can say okay uh, one you know grand norm okay as kelsen calls it, okay so all, all these norms which are validated by you know superior norm can ultimately trace be traced back to one you know grand norm and that grand norm is essentially what holds the entire legal order entire legal system together but for now the distinction that we need to understand okay and make sense of is this that okay there is a world of norms and there is a world of fact okay now these two worlds are different okay uh, and that's something we need to understand we will be able to understand if we are able to you know, apply our mental faculties here okay so the world of facts is something that you observe okay and the world of norms is something that you interpret and then understand okay so example here would be okay that uh, so for example the tax collector okay tax collectors uh, demanded you know that you pay so the norm here is that uh, you ought to pay what is demanded by the tax collectors okay so tax collectors demand is in the factual world and the norm here that you ought to pay is in the normative world okay now the question is that why should you you know pay okay uh, well the statute there is a statute that empowers the uh, tax collector to uh, you know uh, demand the money okay so but the statute is in the factual world okay the statute is a fact or the statute exists okay it's in the factual world so what is the norm there you can say that whatever the you know act um, statute says okay it's an act of the parliament says ought to be followed so you see that the act the enactment uh, um, as it exists is in the factual world but the norm that you ought to follow what the law says okay what the statute says exists in the normative world okay now you may further ask why should i follow the what the statute says well uh, it has been enacted by the parliament following proper procedures okay uh, all all other formal and you know procedural requirements have been followed 
but the fact that all those procedural requirements and the uh, you know have been followed are in the factual world but then where is the norm the norm is that law made by par parliament following all the appropriate procedures ought to be followed so i hope you guys are able to make the distinction as you know mm, uh, you know hans kelsen is uh, trying to tell us okay all the descriptions of what has happened okay are in the factual world all the odds that you see in the other world the parallel world of norms is essentially the world of norms okay so that's the distinction that our philosopher is trying to you know, you know make here so i hope you know this is clear is this clear yes sir yes, okay sir. so uh, along i have a question yes yes pranav tell me uh, Meta norm that Hendrik talks about. Okay, use the word <laughs> grand norm. Okay, because I'm I'm putting words into Kelsen's mouth. So use the word grand norm. Yes. Grand norm. So is it that the grand norm itself is derived from the uh, principles of morality? No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing like that. Okay, because if he says that, then he will just demolish the entire structure that he creates because. the idea is that idea about legal positivism is that we are going to make a difference between law and morality no so yes, if ultimate uh, no problem whatever you call if ultimate uh, uh, you know validity of grand norm is about its moral validity then it's all about connection between law and morality then is not really a legal you know positivist okay but then he says that well the validity of grand norm to a certain extent definitely depends on how effective it is a grand norm which is not effective at all so for example by virtue of a revolution it ha it is it becomes ineffective okay there was an old constitution and the grand norm was that you know whatever the constitution says ought to be followed but the constitution has been replaced okay and then another constitution has been put in place well the old constitution is no longer effective okay so it's no longer valid either but anyway i'm going ahead of myself okay so yes mm, there is no such thing okay because if they say that well validity of the grand norm would depend on its moral content well then they are like saying that well we are giving up on no, our sir, claim I'm that i'm not saying validity of the grand norm i'm saying that is the is the idea of grand norm somehow related to regard to morality that grand norm itself is the, is moral in nature see uh uh see i think i will be able to tell you what the answer is after we take up couple of topics okay where he is so um, as you will see he is talking about the moral order okay which is um, uh, you know which could be subjective as well as objective whereas you know this legal order that he is talking about is necessarily you know it, it's subjective in nature okay that difference definitely is going to Uh, you know uh, help uh, help us okay now why is that see you can say that well what what you call as grand norm could possibly have moral content but not necessarily okay not necessarily so it's moral content okay if you are referring to its moral content its moral content does not determine doesn't have to determine the content of other specific norms okay but it could be that okay you know so for example when you say that you know whatever the constitution says ought to be followed okay so that's the that's the grand norm that you ought to follow the constitution you ought to you know follow the constitution okay now what is moral about this norm it just says that you ought to follow what the you know constitution you know says let's assume that what is moral here nothing except for the fact that there is something that sounds similar to norm that we are talking in terms of ought but then le these legal positivists are always drawing the difference between a legal norm and a moral norm so they are saying that there is a possibility of legal norm you know quite apart from what we call a moral norm okay so there is no such connectivity now the question is that well the constitution might have certain moral content okay so for example it talks about uh you know right to life okay right to um, you know freedom of speech and expression whatever it talks about you can then say that well those are moral content okay but the when we say that the constitution ought to be followed as being the 
you know ultimate grand norm that in itself does not also encompass these moral norms okay so it could be there or it may be there it may not be there okay it may not be there some constitutions might have it others might not have it if you go to new zealand there is no idea of entrenched rights okay there is no idea of entrenched rights uh, in sociological jurisprudence also you see that the entire uh, uh, jurisprudential school is about saying that well uh, rights are a uh, reconciliation of com competing interests so they are also not following any particular moral theory okay so you will see that you will come across you know, even if we are talking in terms of constitution, why am I talking about constitution? Because we, we think that constitution is ultimately a moral document. But that moral content is not determining ultimate validity of the grand norm. Maybe it can indirectly, okay? Uh, if it is too immoral, then obviously it will be not effective, okay? But that's something even uh, accepted by HLA Hart, if you remember, okay? But whether it is valid or not will not depend on its... Mm -mm. Through effectiveness, maybe, but directly its moral content does not determine its, uh, you know, validity. But you may say that well, the grand norm might have some moral content. Well, you might have it indirectly, but there is no direct connection between these two ideas. Because if they accept that, if they concede that, then they will say that well, legal positivism does not exist. So did I make sense there? Because no, no legal positivists say that there is no connection between law and morality. Okay, they don't say, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not talking about Austin and all, but later positivists clearly tell you that at the level of concept, we are not talking about what is happening, okay, but at the level of concept, there is no necessary connection between law and morality. When they say so, they mean that there could be contingent connection. No one's denying that. But conceptually, there is no requirement. So, yes, uh, there is one more question. It's... Uh, um, yeah, you can say legitimacy, but in the non-moral sense. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, so I hope I made sense there, okay? So that's why, but then we were talking about the factual and the normative world. So in the factual world, we use the uh, word causation, that one thing causes another, okay? One thing causes another. There is a... Uh, you can see that the element of time is very essential here because causality works only in time, okay? We, it, we can make sense of causality only in, uh, eh, 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 when we have a sense of time, okay? Uh, well, I think that is also important in the normative world but not as much as it is in the world of causality, okay? In the world of facts, okay? So in case of norms, okay, we do not say that one, one norm causes another, okay? It's validated so we use the word imputation so whether the demand of the uh, robber is valid or not whether it is imputed whether it is valid according to another higher norm or not so it is not so it is not a norm okay whereas the case of tax collector well it is because you can there is a superseding there, there is a superior norm that says that it is valid so that's that's the distinction that we uh, see here okay so i hope this makes it quite clear for all of you so we'll take one more small topic and then we'll proceed tomorrow okay yes any question okay so um, so far you know uh, for positivists okay <clears throat> we are not yet talking about heart because heart comes later okay so you have seen the previous positivist the empirical you know, empiric you know positivist okay uh, Austin and Bentham talk about talk in terms of facts okay and their their definition of law have uh, you know has also been in terms of command okay law is the command of sovereign uh, so uh, uh, command of sovereign but then you know that uh, laws do not um, exist only in the form of commands okay laws something authorize uh, sometimes authorize people to do something okay and then uh, it sometimes permits gives you permission to do something okay so in those cases okay in case of for example authorization you are given the power to do something that you are not otherwise you know in case of permission for example you are allowed to do something that you are not otherwise okay so those are not cases of command because in cases of command you are asked to do something or not asked or asked to uh, you know avoid doing something but in these cases you are given a kind of choice okay so 
that, that could not be explained by you know the previous theorists at least not very clearly they had to stretch their philosophy stretch their you know um, you know theory to be you know encompassing these cases as well okay so those cases have been accounted for by kelsen okay so it says that according to kelsen there is no norm uh, there is no norm uh, where there is no ought okay that is very important okay so how do we talk about the same when it comes to authorizations okay because it does not say that you ought to do something okay it just gives you the permission or it authorizes you to do something so how can we talk think about these situations in terms of ought that you know kelsen is talking about so yeah take example of your driving license okay okay that you have okay when you have a driving license it does not say that you ought to drive it does not say so then how do we account for that in kelsen's philosophy so you can say that well if you have a driving license okay to drive a car okay on the public roads okay if you didn't have one the authorities then okay uh, traffic police and other officers would then have uh, the power to stop you from doing doing so or there will also be uh, consequences uh, for the same but when you have the license then it's a command to them that okay you ought not to stop this person from driving unless they have a reason which the law you know talks about okay so it says that my driving license permits okay but does not compel me to drive my car on public road so where is the you know um, command here then the command is not directed to you but others to allow you to drive okay so it says that the law under which i hold my driving license means that including the police ought to respect and endure my liberty to drive so, okay so that's the idea it is there but not directed to you but to some others okay the same goes for any example that you might take okay which does not take the form of command okay you will see that the norm nonetheless exists okay so in this particular case the ought was directed to the normative ought was directed not to you because you you are not to drive all the time but it is the police officers and other people okay who would otherwise be justified in stopping you now to endure your act of driving but then would you would that mean that you know you would be justified in driving you know in a rational negligent manner obviously not because there is another norm that says that you ought not to drive in a rational negligent manner okay but then i hope you are able to in the second example that i gave you you see that you can understand in the form of an uh, of a command whereas the others you know known as authorizations and permissions you cannot understand purely in the form of command but you can nonetheless under, understand them in the form of some normative ought if not directed to you but then to some others okay so yeah that's how his theory is able to incorporate not just the cases of commands but also authorizations as well as permissions if you have understood the example of permissions you also will uh, understand the example of authorization okay so any act of parliament okay it is valid because it is authorized to okay so that's essentially uh, how he is able to talk not just about commands but also about authorizations and about uh, punishment uh, permissions so in the next class we are going to talk about this three different you know criteria that is and uh, that he you know you know talks about okay that law as a fact okay mm, law in the form of legislation or judicial precedent you know as they exist exist in the world of facts okay the meaning that you give it give to it okay by virtue of interpreting okay is what we understand as norm a legal norm okay then there is another thing called a statement of rule of law and that is a new new thing that we have not yet studied you know studied here so we are going to look at that tomorrow in uh, in the next uh, in our class next discussion we are going to have